watching the news from the Sultanat of Oman television. First, the headlines. Turkey and the United States agreed to work together in Syria after weeks of tensions over Ankara's latest cross-border operation that raised fears of a military confrontation. The UN Security Council discusses calling for a 30-day ceasefire in Syria. And the Sultanate continues its support for Palestinian people through social, educational and health projects. Those were the headlines and now for the news in detail. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson today said NATO allies Turkey and the United States would work together in Syria after a spike in tensions over the conflict. Tillerson said in Ankara after talks with Turkish counterpart Mevlut Cavusoglu that they are not going to act alone any longer. They will work together and they have good mechanisms on how they can achieve this. However, Washington has warned that Turkey's operation against the People's Protection Unit's YPG Kurdish militia in the Afrin region of Syria risks distracting from the fight against militants. He added that Turkey and the United States had to solve the tensions surrounding the Kurdish militia-held Syrian town of Manbij, which Ankara has threatened to attack as a priority. Sweden and Kuwait presented a revised draft UN Security Council resolution calling for a 30-day ceasefire in Syria that diplomats said could win backing from Russia. The new text specifies that the 30-day humanitarian truce would not apply to the Daesh group or Al-Qaeda. That would allow the Syrian government offensive to continue against Al-Qaeda-linked rebel groups in Idlib, the last province in Syria outside the control of Damascus. The draft resolution specifies that the ceasefire would go into effect 72 hours after adoption by the Council. Deliveries of urgently needed food and medical supplies would begin 48 hours after the start of the ceasefire, as would medical evacuations. The measure would also call on all parties to immediately lift sieges, including in eastern Ghouta, Yarmouk, Fua and Kefreya. The United Nations and Syrian Arab Red Crescent said an aid convoy of nine trucks carrying food, health and other supplies for 7,200 people reached the besieged rebel-held Damascus enclave of eastern Ghouta. The convoy is the first since November 28th to enter eastern Ghouta, where almost 400,000 civilians are under siege and follows months of pleading by the United Nations for the government to grant access and agree to cease fire. Jacob Kern, Syria country director for the UN's World Food Program, WFP, said that it had provided a month's worth of food rations for more than 7,000 civilians, whilst Elizabeth Hoff from the World Health Organization said it had delivered 1.8 tons of medical supplies. But the aid was far from enough to feed the hungry residents of eastern Ghouta. The UN Security Council yesterday approved the appointment of Martin Griffiths of Britain as the new envoy for Yemen, the third mediator to take on the mission over the past seven years. Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez on Tuesday informed the council of his intention to appoint Griffiths and no council member raised objections to the decision by a deadline set for yesterday. Griffiths, who is executive director of the Brussels-based European Institute of Peace, brings extensive experience in conflict resolution, negotiation, mediation, and humanitarian affairs. War-wracked Yemen is the world's worst humanitarian crisis, according to the United Nations, which 60% of the population, 17 million people, are in need of food, 7 million of whom are at risk of famine. Griffiths will replace Ismail Wild Sheikh Ahmed of Mauritania, who last month said he would not stay on as Yemen envoy beyond the end of his contract at the end of this month. A Myanmar minister told Bangladesh's president that Myanmar is ready to take back Rohingya Muslims who fled violence through Bangladesh, said it wanted the hundreds of thousands of refugees to have a safe and dignified return. Myanmar's Home Minister, on a three-day visit to Bangladesh, 
told President Abdul Hamid that Myanmar was ready to take back Rohingya under a deal that the country signed late last year. Myanmar will implement the recommendations by a commission led by former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. Some 700,000 Rohingya refugees have arrived in Bangladesh since late August when Myanmar's military launched a security crackdown. Myanmar has said it launched clearance operations against terrorists. News channels and social media sites covered the visit of His Excellency Yusuf bin Alawi bin Abdullah, Minister Responsible for Foreign Affairs, to the Palestinian lands. Agencies, Arab and foreign news channels and social media platforms described the visit and its aims by the rare Arab step and practical initiative to support the Palestinian sovereignty over East Jerusalem pointed that the Omani situation that supported Palestinian cause under the wise leadership of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos. Reuters news agency described the visit in a special report by the historical visit, while the French news agency welcomed the Palestinian responses of the visit and its positive results in serving the Palestine case. The TV channels covered the visit with the highlighted statements by His Excellency Yusuf bin Alawi bin Abdullah, where the social media sites published the photographs of the visit. The Sultanate continued its support for the Palestinian people in order to help them facing Israeli occupation. The support this time represented in the project of qualifying and maintaining social houses for a number of families in the Gaza Strip. The Omani Charity Authority and the Ministry of Health in Gaza signed a memorandum of establishing five health centers and also signed a memorandum with the Ministry of Education for establishing five schools. Still to come in our news bulletin. A training program was conducted on Palm Fronds products in the Governorate of Al Buraymi. back to some more local news. Oman oil price April delivery 2018 today increased by 16 cents to reach 61 US dollars and 96 cents. The average price of Oman oil March delivery 2018 has stabilized at 66 dollars and 32 cents, thus 4 dollars and 75 cents per barrel higher than February delivery 2018. In a distinctive poetry night, a celebration was held in the Wilay of Shalim and Al Halaniyat Islands to conclude the poetry competition Bayrak Shalim, which aims to celebrate talented poets from inside and outside the Sultanate. The event was organized by the Directorate General for Heritage and Culture in the Governorate of Dhafar in cooperation with the Office of Wali Shalim and Al Halaniyat and a support of private sector. The ceremony was presided over by His Highness Sayyid Mohammed bin Salim Al Sayyid. Translating their thoughts to tangible reality in the fields of crafts industry topped the aims of the training program on palm fronds production in the Walaya of Mehada in the Governorate of Al Buraymi. The Public Authority for Crafts Industry continues providing training programs in various handicrafts aiming to preserve this public legacy and develop it in line with the market's needs. The program accompanied by an exhibition to showcase a number of front products. In order to face future requirements and enhancing ladies' skills, Purple Leadership Forum was held in the Governorate of Muscat. The forum, which came under the theme of I'm a leader and a decision maker, implemented programs for leadership skills and developing abilities in the field of planning and implementing voluntary programs for female participants. 
The forum also aimed to develop communication skills and building positive relations in addition to develop knowledge skills for women. The forum included a number of work sessions with participation of more than 300 female students from various schools in the governorate of Muscat. The NBO Oman Open, one of the first golf tournaments for 2018 European Tour, kicked off yesterday. More details in the following report by Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Rubey. The biggest global sporting event golf tournament kicked off yesterday at Al Moj Golf in Muscat. This event is the first European Tour event to be played in the Sultanate of Oman. This NBO Oman Open is an integral part of the race to Dubai, which includes European Tour events all around the world. The NBO Oman Open is the first time the European Tour has come to Oman. It's the 29th country that we're visiting in 2018 on the European Tour International Schedule and it's the 44th country we're visiting in the history of the European Tour. 138 players are competing this year. That's 136 professionals and two amateurs. Azan Al Rumi is an invitation, local amateur, as well as Nasser Yakub from Bahrain. He won the HIO amateur open a few weeks ago so we have a great field of 138 players from 30 countries a full prize fund of 1.75 million dollars it's a four round tournament 72 holes and the tournament also carries Ryder Cup points race to Dubai points and an official world golf ranking point so it's an important week for the European Tour. We met uh, with Oman's uh, most successful and celebrate amateur golfer, Azan Rumhi, and he had these to say. This is the biggest uh, event uh, Oman has hosted, uh, the biggest sporting event we've ever hosted uh, in terms of the number of worldwide viewers. There's uh, expected uh, to be around 400 million viewers around the world mm -hmm. and people watching from the United States, from China, from all continents are going to be watching this tournament. So it is big. Uh, it's got a prize money of $1.75 million mm -hmm. for, for the players, uh, for the players to, to, to try and win. And uh, I'm really honored to be be part of uh, the players playing this tournament and uh, I really hope that uh, it grows year after year and that uh, in the future we have uh, not just myself but maybe a few other Omanis taking part. And his friend from Australia has also these to say. So far it's beautifully run, you know, the golf course is magical and also you're in Oman, so the friendliest place on earth. Uh, not what I had in mind actually, but a couple breaks didn't go quite my way, work at it and come back tomorrow, hopefully have a better round. Azam uh, is the uh, only player from Oman uh, and uh, he's quite happy actually participating in this particular tournament here with the international players. Uh, he has good friends uh, all uh, the way from Australia and they are here actually playing uh, with him and I'm sure he's very happy actually to see them here. Once again, uh, this is Abdullah bin Ahmed Arubi'i, Sultanate of Oman Television, covering this tournament. South Africa's parliament has chosen Cyril Ramaphosa to be president after Jacob Zuma, tarred by scandal, was forced from office. An anti apathied activist who became a wealthy businessman, Ramaphosa was seen by many as a natural heir to Nelson Mandela back in 1999 when he missed out on succeeding him in the presidency. More details in the following report. South Africa enters the Ramaphosa era. The 65-year-old former anti-apartheid activist who moved from politics to business has been elected president by the South African parliament. He takes over from Jacob Zuma, who finally resigned after being pushed out of his party. The ANC appointed Cyril Ramaphosa as its head in December with a clear agenda to end the corruption which defined the Zuma era. Issues that have to do with corruption, issues of how we can straighten out our state-owned enterprises, and how we deal with state capture uh, is uh, issues that are on our radar screen. Those are issues that we're going to be addressing, and tomorrow we will also have an opportunity to outline. 
some of the steps that we are going to be taking. Ramaphosa was an activist from the beginning of the struggle against apartheid and was seen by many as a presidential heir apparent to Nelson Mandela. But after failing to succeed his mentor in 1999, he decided to move from politics to business, where he became one of the wealthiest men in South Africa. Among the first to benefit from the policy of positive discrimination for blacks, he became an economic success while much of South Africa was experiencing financial difficulties. Right now, his appeal to broad society is defined by the fact that he's not Jacob Zuma. How that changes once Jacob Zuma is out of the picture, I think, is another ball game altogether. Now alone, he must try and improve the ANC's image, his goal, to win the 2019 general election and finally fulfill the promise of the rainbow nation dreamt by Nelson Mandela. And now for the general weather forecast. Clear skies will prevail over the Sultanate with chances of low clouds and fog late at night over the governorates of Dahra and Al Buraimi. Winds will be northerly to northwesterly light to moderate. Seas will be moderate with a rough with a maximum wave height of 2.5 metres. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Turkey and the United States agree to work together in Syria after weeks of tensions over Ankara's latest cross-border operation that raised fears of a military confrontation. The UN Security Council discusses calling for a 30-day ceasefire in Syria. And the Sultanate continues its support for Palestinian people through social, educational and health projects. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.